Welcome to the tutorial video on Twine 2.6. In this video, I'm going to cover the topic of understanding white space as it applies to Harlow 3.3. We've already seen examples of how white space, the space between words and also the space between lines within a passage, affect how we see the presentation of text, resulting from how we create macros and especially how we use macros in combinations within a passage in the results. So let's look at an example. So I have here the use of the link repeat macro right here. And we see, notice I have the end of a line right here and then the start of a new line. Now this is important because when the link repeat macro runs, it repeats everything that's within the hook it's attached to. And as a reminder, hooks are the open and closing square single brackets right here. We're working with macros in Harlow. So the link repeat macro repeats everything. This includes all spacing. So the spacing of a new line as well as the spacing potentially between words or other macros within it. So let's look what I mean. So I'm going to go ahead and start from here. Let's go to build and play. And we see right here the link and we repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat. And every time we are repeating, we are including all of what's called white space. Again, the space between words as well as the space between lines. However, that may not always be what we want in the resulting output when we use the macros. When we're designing Entwine, we sometimes are very particular about how we want to present different things. In this case, we may not actually want every single new line to be added, nor we want potentially line between macros. So let's look at that second example and I'll circle, circle back to the first. So in the second example here, I've got a macro, a line of text, a macro, and a line of text, all within the same passage. Now something important is going to happen here when we play from this. So let's go ahead and start story from here go to build and go to play. Notice it says right here, there is text and then a line and then text and then a line. This is because macros take up white space within the output of a passage unless we change it. So the default presentation of the inclusion of macros within a passage is the generation of white space. In other words, the space between words as well as the new lines I talked about. This is rarely what we want. We usually want to handle this and maybe condense down the white space. So by understanding white space and how it is created when we use macros, we can start to have a better control of our presentation of the resulting text when we use them. So one of the ways we can control them is by doing something that's called collapsing white space. There are symbols within Harlow that I'm about to cover that when used with macros collapse all possible new space between words and other things down to a single thing. In this way, we can include lots of potential code and have the output be reduced down or collapse the white space, in other words. This becomes powerful knowledge to have as we build more advanced patterns within Harlow, as we introduce more macros that have hooks that affects other macros that have hooks, and we see macro usage increase, we now increasingly, at the same time, care about how the white space is generated with them. So let's start from example two. I'm about to move into example three, and we're going to incorporate some new symbols within our programming within Harlow. These are open and closing curly brackets. So we need to be careful which brackets we're using. Square brackets, as single square brackets are hooks. Double square brackets, we create links. And curly brackets, or sometimes braces, depending on where you live in the world, are collapsing that white space. So let's move over to example three. So I, here I have open and closing curly brackets, or braces, again, depending on where you live in the world around this right here with the macro usage in the text and then a second usage around the whole thing. So let's see what this looks like. Let's go ahead and move over to example three. I will start the story from example three. Oh, well, look at this. The use of the macro which generated new lines for us has now been collapsed. So we collapsed the possible white space. Now let's look at a reconfiguration of this. I'm going to do something interesting and I'm going to take out these middle ones right here. And so we have a single opening and a single closing because I want to show something particularly important when we start to care about white space within macro usage. So we started and it looked okay. 
right? The first macro usage was collapsed. The second macro usage was collapsed. Now, intuitively, we would think that this would generate the same thing that I previously showed you. We would be wrong, but intuitively, we might think that. So let's go ahead and play. Oh, look, what has happened here is, as I mentioned, all of the white space has been collapsed, all of the new lines. Other than the space between words, which pre-exist here, the new lines were collapsed. So in the first case, I had open and closing curly brackets or braces around these different sets, and it produced a new line and then a new line. Now let's repeat that real quick because this is worth paying attention to. Notice that there is actually a single new line right here. This is onto the next line right here of the collapsed white space. So we have a set of collapsed white space which will collapse to the text and a set of collapsed white space which will collapse to the text. And in both cases, the macro usage will be removed from the resulting output. It will be collapsed down. So generally, this is the preferred way to go about it. So with, if you want one sentence to follow the next sentence, then what you want right here is a set and then a set. So let's finally link or circle back to, using the link back row, circle back to the initial example I started with. So we saw over here in example one that every time the link repeat macro runs, it repeats what's inside the hook, and this makes perfect sense. Sometimes, though, we may not want it to actually generate those new lines. Well, as we've now seen by introducing curly brackets or braces, again, depending on where you are in the world, that's what you call them, we can collapse that resulting white space down. That is, instead of constantly generating new lines every time because it will generate exactly what's within the hook, sometimes we want to collapse that. So finally, let's move over to example five and look at this. In this new example, I've enclosed using curly brackets or braces this entire code, the macro and the resulting hook, all of which will be collapsed. So in this case, instead of producing a new line and more every time, it will append the word to the end each time I use it. So let's move to example five and look at how it's different from example one. So I'm going to go ahead and start the story over here with example five, and let's move over. So previously we saw every time the link repeat macro ran, it added a new line and the new text. In this new case, it's collapsing all of that down and adding it to the end of the line exactly as it appears within its corresponding hook. And this is very different than we saw over here, where lines were added every time. So in the first case, we are producing exactly what's within the hook. We are repeating it every time we click. In the second case, we're doing it but we're also collapsing the white space correspondingly. And so this becomes incredibly important as we saw with example two and into example three and its changing of how we understand the resulting white space of macro usage. Every time we use a macro, it takes up output space. Sometimes we want this to happen, but oftentimes, again, as we get into more advanced patterns within a Harlow, we rarely want it to happen. And in fact, we usually want it to be collapsed together. And we'll see ways to embrace kind of collapsing all of the code within one passage and sort of more advanced patterns we'll cover in the future. For right now, though, understanding white space becomes incredibly important. Again, as we approach integrating macros and hooks with macros and hooks in more advanced and complex patterns, we start to care about what will result when we use these. And so in thinking about this, we want to be aware that when we use macros, and particularly when we use certain combinations of macros and hooks, we run the risk of kind of generating bunches of new lines and bunches of text. If we don't want that, we can use these single curly brackets or braces to collapse that white space, collapse those new lines within our code. Particularly within example three, this can be incredibly useful, again, to kind of collapse corresponding macros and text usage down to either a single line, if we really wanted that, or multiple lines, understanding how Harlow also thinks about what will result from what we write to what a reader might potentially see, thinking about white space along the way. Again, a kind of simple concept, but has a lot of complications for us as we, again, move into more advanced patterns where the number of macros 
within a passage might increase, and we don't necessarily want to generate four or five or sometimes a dozen lines of output, when we could simply collapse that down into a single line to help us better organize what the reader sees versus the kind of code or macro usage we write as authors within Harlow 3.3. Thanks for watching.